Video games. What up, dudes, and welcome back to the Yo Video Games Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Andrew. There was again the controller generous patrons kept us going for over 400 episodes. Yeah, if you're interested in becoming a patron at any level, please check out patreon.com slash Yo Video Games Podcast. Due to the week is Matthew K. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Uh, do you think he goes by Matt? Uh, you go by all three. It just depends on who knows you. Just don't call just, me. Just just don't call me Maddie. <laughs> don't call you Maddie. I'm a don't call me Drew. Don't don't call you Matt. All right, cool. Well, <laughs> thank you, Matthew K. We're gonna stick with the the full name for now. Uh, uh, but yeah, head over need, to. Do, do I need to read just this? I want to. I want to. Is this pissing? Is this piss you off? Does this piss you off? There we go. Yeah, that would be better. Uh, I'm, I'm in that I'm, third. I'm trying to center myself here. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Just your your head floating in the center of the frame. Anybody uh, who likes film is uh, gonna love that. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> But yeah, head over to our uh, our Patreon page. There's a whole bunch of side content. Uh, I shared a video essay that I, I never finished making. There's there's that. It's like a 30 second clip of an intro of a video essay that died on the vine. If in case you've ever been interested in seeing how I'd make a video essay, but <laughs> I, it's dead now, so you can watch it. <laughs> um, and of course, we've got all of our side quest content on there. Now, this week, uh, it feels like a bit of a bummer because we have to start it by saying that a lot of our predictions for last week uh, seem like, or I guess two weeks ago now, last week or two weeks ago, uh, coming true. Just a lot of layoffs. And that is... Oh, my God. Yes. Jesus Christ. The day after it was Activision and it was like 20% of the workforce. Um, although it wasn't... The nineteen hundred, the nineteen hundred. Okay, let me put it this way: nineteen hundred. It was twenty percent of all of my of Microsoft Xbox gaming division. Not n the Activision was like uh, something or other, because the layoffs right, okay. were the layoffs included like Bethesda and and Xbox itself and and Activision. Now I knew. Here's the thing: it was like I knew. We knew we knew there were going to be redundancies in the Activision because Activision was a huge company, had a ton of right. you know PR and, and community manager, blah blah blah. Right? We knew that there was going to be overlap, and there were probably going to be redundancies. There were probably going to be people that go, but that wasn't the case here. They didn't just fire redundant positions; they were firing artists, designers, developers, like like longtime people, Mike Yabara from Blizzard. Like I don't I mean I don't really. Uh a guy who was certain he was going to be there for the long haul. For the long haul, right. Right. So, a ton of people that had uh, relocated across country to be in Irvine, which is not a cheap area to live, all got axed. Literally, a couple of them apparently, like, just days after they relocated. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. That's yeah, and dirty. Then this morning, Sega of America said they're getting, they basically were gutting yep. most of their QA. or Shocked or, and, about that? Because they're kind of riding high right now that's what everyone was saying like wait you just released two high profile games that are apparently selling very well and they just just fucking like le like industry is getting fucked i don't know how to say this any other nice way like right. i know i know we're trying I, I try to like ease up on the language for for whatever <laughs> but like holy cow trying. like this industry is 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 basically like I mean, you know, there's that there's that weird episode of, of South Park where like they they just like rake indie four over the coals, and that's yeah. the industry right now. The industry right now is is indie and and <laughs> and the publishers, you know, are just like George Lucas, Steven Spielberg. Although I always had issue with that particular episode because I was like Spielberg is the one who's actually cool with digital pre or preserving films as they originally were. Like he had a huge fucking change of heart over E. T. and yeah. and I because. Long, long diatribe, but they're like, George Lucas is like, I never want anyone to see the original version of Star Wars again. Spielberg had a change of heart where he's like, you know what? The walkie talkies were dumb because I was working in in uh, physical media retail at the time. And the when e, when they had a DVD re-release of E.T. come out, they Spielberg actually called up Universal and forced them to put the original version of E.T. on every single DVD version of the of, of the game of the movie. Originally, only the giant super collector's box was going to have the original version. 
But Spielberg said that's bullshit and, and actually made them put yeah. it in every standard. So we had to put these stickers all over every standard DVD of the ET, basically that like said the the bonus disc is not a bonus disc. It's the eighty it's like the eighty two version of the movie. So because no one would have bought it otherwise. Yeah, well, just like a weird thing aside, like Spielberg is actually cool with old movies being presented the way they were. Lucas is the one who's just kind of like a movie's never finished. I must keep fucking it. Yeah. Well, he he is also like a, a sort of effects obsessed. He wants to get the cleanest looking. You know, he ran uh, or he created ILM. Um, yeah. You know, to get the best looking effects and then proceeded to kill a lot of the things that made ILM so notable. It's so weird, too, because like I, I think there's a part of me that that's like I have I, I there's parts of me that I have some respect and I have some not like very no little to no negative respect for Lucas on mm. um, screwing people like David Prowse over on residuals is one of them. But um, part, there, part of the thing is like he, he more than almost any other filmmaker you could sit down and have a conversation with and you will learn volumes more about the business about producing mm -hmm. about i mean pretty much his only like real weakness and and obviously i'm not in a position to criticize george fucking lucas but like his weakness really probably is like his writing his directing well straight up outright directing is is i think the real he 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 has vision you can see in a lot of his movies i think when he became more and more commercially minded because he became mm. the studio because yeah. people forget that a director doesn't think about the things a producer thinks about and once you become a producer or a producer director yeah it changes the way you make movies because you're now actually concerned about you know how much does this shot yeah. cost? this will about. be relevant to sony because kojima was there but anyways yes. yeah like the <laughs> point is i think he kind of didn't understand there's a part of me that feels like lucas never understood the appeal of star wars in a weird sort of way and that was the grittiness that was the sort of like roughness right. of like how it, it it felt like a dirty, lived in, imperfect uh, uh, universe. Galaxy. Well, not all the movies from the seventies had a lived in, like even the cleanest blockbuster still by today's standards would look right. Because you're talking about a you're talking about like French Connection and right Godfather and all these, and it's just kind of like Star Wars worked because it was like dirty. Yeah, it was and organic. Because you know, like when you got to the prequels, when he got to do what he wanted to do, he got you got this hyper clean digital Buck Rogers chromed out future, right? Uh, for most of it, and it like yeah, and it looked like trash. <laughs> and so, it's a, a major step back technologically when they when the Empire took over, apparently. <laughs> Everything yeah, and that's why you have all those special and editions trying to, and it's like, man, you missed you missed the thing that people actually gravitated right. towards, which was the grit. But um, you know, either way, let's talk about the Sony. Let's talk about the the, the Sony state of play because they had a big state of play. Like it was funny because we did have that whole thing. Like we had a whole prediction episode about like who put people putting their cards on the table, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 Sony immediately followed that up after that, and was like, hey, we're gonna have our here what what looked like here's putting our cards on the table, and it is and it isn't. And and I'm actually shocked by the part that it isn't. And 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 what I mean by that mostly is that like unless a game had a specific day in this state of play, a specific day, they didn't have a release date at all for it. In fact, they sometimes right. most of them didn't have a year even. There yeah. was a couple that were like autumn. <laughs> yeah. I don't I even think, think there were. I don't think there was a single autumn game. Wasn't that Sonic Shadow? Okay. Shadow that oh. that was like autumn twenty twenty four. Did it say autumn? I actually that one. I actually don't remember what it said at the end of it. I Which just saw for for all of our Americans. That's uh, fall. Okay, the British. Uh, well, fall, I mean, and that's autumn. that's well. The thing is, that's not even going to be like it's a better that's, name. That's not even a Sony game. That's not even like a Sony exclusive or a no, Sony I was, timed. It's just it's just a Sonic game that's going to be on everything when it comes out. Also, of of all the things that caused hype in that state of play, Sonic getting the most hype was the weirdest thing. Like people were like even saying like Death Stranding is mid. Like you, the amount of people just like typing mid in chat, but like for Sonic, were losing their minds. And I was just like, really though? You got you <laughs> got to understand where you're in that like prime nostalgia age now, where where. Uh, People were kids playing Sonic Adventure 2 
and Sonic Heroes on GameCube yeah. are now in their <clears throat> 20s, early 30s, and now it's their big nostalgia boner. So they see they see that that you know I am wearing as I say this as I'm I'm literally wearing a classic style Sonic shirt. Um, I make no bones about it. I fucking despise modern era Sonic. I really well, do. Mostly like just. I- but I, the thing I despise more than than modern era Sonic is Shadow. I, I hate that character. As I said, I say all of this with the Sonic Knuckles thing hanging on my wall. I love classic Sonic. I just yeah, I, I anything don't mind was Sonic. like talking and dialogue and story and this stupid dumb character that be, went from being meme to actually you no know, truly unironically beloved. The I amount, the amount of like veiny cock shadow pictures that are floating around the internet the by the internet, way yeah like and the fact that i know it exists upsets me uh it's just so, I, yeah, I am, I am that sonic generations is a really is is a good game um but like doubling down on on freaking shadow like you're gonna have shadow like shadow the hitchhiker i don't care how nostalgic you are or whatever like most sonic fans hell even most shadow fans would agree shadow the hitchhiker was not a good game so throwing that game, what what seemingly looks like that game, and maybe more Sonic Adventure Two stuff. Oh man, I don't know. Like, I hope it's just Sonic Adventure Two and and more levels, more levels from the goods, or or at least like perceived good Sonic games. Like, we don't need Shadow the Hedgehog levels in I Sonic it. Generations, but I, I hope it is truly an excellent game. I hope it lives up to all the hype that it had in the chat. I just don't understand it. Yeah. Well, the, the well again, I'm telling you, it's it's fucking old now. <laughs> it, you're you're old. You're past the point where now now this is nostalgic now. Okay? Yeah. Like like anything that's like GameCube era Sonic is now nostal- is now considered nostalgic for a lot of twenty somethings. You know where whereas at, at you know at the time you know Mega maybe remember Mega Man Nine coming out. Yeah, you know, and stuff like, and like, oh my god, it's just like yeah. it's so nostalgic. That's hitting because that was nostalgia for us back when Mega Man Nine came out. Now it is. Now is the time for the GameCube to be the nostalgia system. You remember when that Bomberman game came? Like the they first brought back Bomberman after it not being around for ages, and we had a few friends that like absolutely lost. We were at like a game night, and they like lost their minds about how amped they were for this Bomberman game. Hopefully, that- it wasn't. Hopefully it wasn't Act Zero. I, I don't, I don't remember which one, but that's how I feel again. Where I'm just like, yeah, Bomberman was fun, but like, why are we so hyped about this? Which is so weird that they're saying that because I'm like, man, Bomberman is at his peak on the Sega Saturn. If you play like the the eight player version of Bomberman, which we've only done like once on on Neo Video Games, but because we 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 have a, we actually have a, a physical copy of that game. Oh um, yeah. That game, and we have two multitabs for some Max has two multitabs. Saturn Bomberman is truly legitimately great. I don't know if I'd be like losing my mind or anything over it, but I'm like, yeah, it's a it's like it's like the, the quintessential graphics don't matter. This game's this game's just great. Yeah, I I have no hate for it. I just don't understand the hype, like the the absolute unbridled joy that it brings to a person. I'm like, wow, I wish I could like I genuinely I'm like, I wish I could feel that. Bomberman, I'm with you. I don't get I don't get it because Bomberman's great, but I'm like, it's not one of those things that I'm like, yeah, I'd be losing my mind over. Right. Shadow, I kind of get because you gotta understand there are many people out there, they want to fuck Shadow. Yeah. They yeah. want Shadow, they want Shadow to be inside them. <laughs> I mean then that, that's and right. stirring them up. And they want to tell you this in graphic, gory detail. They want to show you it with all their, with, with visually, with their own artwork. Like oh, I know, I've been on their Tumblr. own, their own writings. Like you got to understand, this is this is a deep seated love for this, you know, anthropomorphic, you know, cartoon animal character. It, 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 it it's primal. It's a different level than than Bomberman. It's more, it's even more than just nostalgia. It's lust freaks me out a little bit um but i this this goes into the first like okay hell divers was technically the first thing they showed but let's go into the first major presentation let's talk about stellar blade which Which finally got a release date after they basically said last year it's going to come out in 2023 and then they said nothing about the game for the entirety of the year the year passed and people were like what's going on (laughs) so april 26 now april 26 uh it you hit the nail on the head where you're just like, it just basically was just showing us how much they wanted to make a near game. It's so, it's so clearly derivative of near down to how nice the asset, like, okay, I'm not going to complain. 
but it's so clear that like this this group wanted to make a near game and i hope it's good i all right i'm gonna be honest it's got it looked Perry's. boring as shit it looked boring as shit though. i thought the presentation for it was awful um it was the decision to here's focusing on side quests here's vending machines here's camps you can rest at i'm like why are you showing us this part of the game this could have just been like a random youtube upload just like they they got it got better where they actually started showing the fighting. I'm like this should have just been your you know cinematics and fighting. That's all you needed to show and the release date. I just wanted the release date. It was going on and on and on. I'm like you can talk to people in town. Wow, <laughs> right? It's like I okay. I didn't need a story presentation for it. For one, uh, it's not going to live up to near story. Almost definitely. Yeah, first of all, yeah, uh, first of all, like whatever. Like, let's not kid ourselves here. But two, the more they went on, the less it looked like it was even going to get close to a good story. So they should have focused on the action. Uh, I I really don't feel good hating on any like pursuit, yeah, you know, creative pursuit. But like, goddamn, that, it just looks so. I just I by like minute five, I was. I actually like got up and walked away for a minute and came back and they were still going. Like it was... I think it's someone in my chat put it best. We have this is this is the ultimate we have near at home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and a lot of those costumes, like the near the near costumes, uh, getting explained away the way they got explained, um, barely held water. And like now they're like, I I hope they don't try to explain. The... Yeah, well, Nier never outright stated, why does your address like this? You kind of have to, you can infer it from the game. But the right. thing is that that's interesting about Nier is that it had a very, everyone looks like this, all like all the, all the, all the battle maidens look the same. Right. Nier. And this one, they had a bunch of different costumes all the time. And they all, they all look like, you know, like, like crazy weird sci-fi stripper outfits. Um, right. Like they were all just because these are the people that made that that battle angel EK game or whatever, um, I, I whatever. Mean, like looks, uh, like looks wise, like in terms of graphics and character design stuff, it it looks pretty good. It looks good, um, but overall the game looks boring. So it, it's really going to depend on on how combat, how yeah. on the combat. How does the combat feel? Because it looks like it could <clears throat> be pretty good. I would say, like, when they're actually just showing them chopping and parrying and doing, I'm like, this might actually be pretty good. I have no idea why they spent mm -hmm. like three fourths of this presentation on the mundane parts of the game. Well, it makes me feel like probably they didn't have enough of the combat finished, which, which is, is, you know, we're ooh, four months out. Right. Um, that's scary. Although, I, one thing I will say positive about the combat, it didn't have that like floaty combat that a lot of, mm. uh, you know, action, it, it's not JRPG, but like that, that action. Character um, action. Yeah, character action. Thank you. Uh, where it has like, where the hits don't feel like they're actually doing anything. Like they, it feels like there's impact. Mm. To yeah. It. Like, it did look the, like the, that was The, the problem for fine. Spoken really had where it's like, you're hitting this thing in the air right. and it's like nothing's happening. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like, I, I feel like this will probably have pretty decent. Probably have pretty decent. Content. We might get into it, and it's just kind of like the button register, like the input lag is terrible or something. We might that might like come in and be like, oh, ugh. like who knows? Uh, but I don't know. There, there's part of me that's like, oh, there's way more to this game than than I thought as far as like mechanics go. Yeah, but, but none of the more exciting mechanics. You know about like you know you can you can craft shit or you can sit at a like a lawn chair. You know you can do side quests for people if you want to or not. And I'm like, well, it does it does feel like they were going after near automata like hard, um, but then at the same time like it had a couple of things that like it also looked like they were like oh we love Monster Hunter too, yeah. Um, <clears throat> which you is... had like you had weird gross creatures they were fighting right. and stuff like that and. And, uh, you know, if they find a way to marry that in a fun way, more power to them. That seems cool. I just, I don't, I don't see. I thought it was going. funny where, where like they tried really hard to be near the one point where they're like, um, you know, so the, the airborne's whole, you know, whole reason for existence is the annihilation of another thing's existence. You know, it's, you know, it's pretty messed up when you think about it, whatever the line was like, that's just their job. I'm like, Oh, you are trying so hard. <laughs> it's, um, it was just, I don't know. I hope it lands a lot better than that thing did. Uh, I don't expect a lot. 
Um, then you had Zenless Zone Zero, which didn't really show anything to know what it is. That's also a character action game by the Genshin devs. Here's a crazy thing. Here's a crazy thing about this game. It said now in development for PS5, which we've known about. So no, it's been streamed. Like they've done sponsor. Max did a sponsored stream for it. it. It's there was like a playable build that they gave out and had people trying out. Like interesting. They were treating this trailer was treating it like it was an announcement for the first time. I wonder if it's just like they didn't get any traction with those streams. It's 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 the most bizarre type of trailer to follow up where they had a blitzkrieg of people playing the game who were not devs who were who were content creators and it didn't have any kind of reveal or it didn't have like a a release date right but it's it has to now be close in then. it's 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 the it's truly the most bizarre thing i guess if anything they're just saying hey it's going to be on ps5 as well as pc i wonder if they scrapped it from the playable build or something like that i don't know that's weird it's it's super bizarre. That was the most bizarre trailer to me because it's like we've known about it. Like it's been announced. It's been around for a while. Um, they had a playable version go out to content creators not long ago. Like we're talking like a couple weeks ago, and now we have this weird trailer. Like we're like, hey, we're announcing this brand new title you've never heard of, and it's like, but we have. <laughs> like we've watched people play the game. Weird. That is weird as hell. I, I don't know. This whole this whole state of play was weird. It felt thrown together in a way. Yeah, where it was exactly. like they were responding to. Look, Xbox is looking to dominate this year. They've had, I don't know, a rough decade. Uh, <laughs> and so it's finally their year. I guess it's fine that Sony's not going to like. Yeah, because here's the thing. I feel it, like Xbox it, but... was like, here's our big games for the year. And Sony, like to jump ahead here. Sony was basically saying like third parties are going to carry us. We don't yeah. we don't we don't have a game this year. Third parties. He, they they hinted at a new stealth espionage game from Kojima possibly many uh, years out obviously. Yeah, several years. Is that the one that they also showed like a snippet of for uh they just did a big pan out to Sony Studios and it had like fizzent or whatever like underneath the Sony Studios like yeah. arch sign or whatever yeah but you remember at like the the game awards no that was od that was the microsoft one that's the microsoft one right okay so it's not the same thing uh yeah no. i don't know I, I that just seems like a weird again ploy to say we totally have things coming guys someday ps5 seems like it's a real fumble <laughs> Like if we're we're th they they said it we're three years into it, and uh, and name, the amount of like games on PS5 only not on PS4 in some form or fashion either is small. It's really very small. small. <laughs> and how many of those games had to be only on PS5? As we found out from like Ratchet and Clank and Returnal going to PC and running off of regular hard drives, uh. Not less, right? Not many, even from, less than what they said. Ratchet and Clank's whole marketing push was that it couldn't be on anything but PS5 too, but because uh, of the loading. Yeah. Oh, a normal NVMe couldn't do this. All right. Um, it, there were. I don't want to say like there was nothing that looked cool. No, there was there was games but... here, and a lot of them did look cool. But like for for I think for you and me, I think what we're really getting at here is like the the release timing, the 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 weird. It's weird. It's, yeah, it because there was a lot of things that were sort of like this is coming out next week, and then yeah. there's then there's a bunch of things that are like here's March, and then like the rest of the stuff is like eh, whenever someday. Yeah, and, and I mean we've said this before, but to like refresh. Uh, generally speaking, if they say something like fall 2024, they mean like the end of fall or if right. they say whenever they just say a year, they probably mean like holiday of that year. Exactly. Like yeah. It, so sometimes or if they only say the year, it's because they think they're going to get pushed back into the next year. Um, you know, there's like weird 
things of foam stars season one man ign uh was really pushing that foam stars is actually not a splatoon ripoff guys it's good it's really good they well here's like the thing because they're like it's free for the month of february on the playstation mm-hmm. premium which hit me with the realization i'm like wait does that mean this game is a paid product after february i think so yeah oh it's dead oh yeah. it's really dead <laughs> Yeah, they must be like they're trying to get you hooked on it to wanna buy. I don't. I know. think th- they're doing the fr- they're free for a month to try to try to avoid the Babylon's fall of this game's inevitable future. I mean, it looks. I mean, frankly, it has a way better art style than Babylon's fall, so it's at least got that going. People will draw Rule Thirty Four of this of their fucking like bubble chick. Um, no, nobody was drawing Rule Thirty Four of Babylon's fall. <laughs> you don't know that. Let's head over to Tumblr. <laughs> so at least it's got that going for it but i'm like man this like every time i look at folks i'm like you know servers closing in 11 months <laughs> Oof. Oof. um yeah that uh, that was a thing dave the diver has a godzilla collab uh, in may collab, which uh that's sort of cool uh, if you're man. really if you're really into godzilla you know and you haven't touched dave the diver this might get you to touch dave the diver um the indie darling right. of last year right and now coming to ps5 and and pc um yeah well i guess we'll see on that v rising uh nothing nothing really to like talk about on v rising and that was v 20. rising looks like a game that got lost on its way to the pc game show and somehow ended up in the sony state of play <laughs> yeah yeah that's rough but fair uh Silent Hill, the short message is available free to play right it's, now. It's funny how it's literally a remake of PT. It does seem like that. I it's, it's pretty much we remade PT. Here it is, Shadow Drop, playable, like you know, with the announcement. And then there's gonna be another big Silent Hill game after. So Silent Hill 2 remake. Uh I remember we talked about the company doing it, not necessarily being the most reliable company to do remakes. Bloober team. And man. When you're watching that, it does the graphics alone don't look bad, but when combat starts, oof, it looks a little jank, don't it? Well, this is and then and and Nico B was saying this, and and he was like, I was once the combat started, I was like, man, I was starting to like this is rough. This isn't coming out anytime soon. And he was right because the game didn't even get a year. It just said another now in development. They first showed That's this right. game a year ago. Yeah, and then they had this fine. They a year later they're updating it, and and it doesn't even have a year. It's just now in development. That's right. And it's like, yeah, I guess it does look pretty rough, doesn't it? It also looks way more actiony than I remember Silent Hill Two being. Personally, well, I, it's sort of like how the original Resident Evil and Resident Evil Two versus what the remakes are. The remakes are far. Well, I guess not technically of Resident Evil One, but remake two versus the original Resident Evil yeah. Two. Yeah way more action it does seem like they're really going for like that sort of like kind of like they don't have the limitations people keep forgetting that playstation one for instance like the reason resident evil had fixed camera angles is because they couldn't make a camera work any other way like it wasn't some stylistic choice purely for style it was like hey this is the only way we can make it run right like and that affected and that's one of the coolest things about like the first few console generations is that limitations bred a lot of the shit we now look back on and go wow that was really creative and wonderful but like today if they chose to do fixed camera angles i bet you wouldn't go over well at all you'd get like that that sort of enthusiastic like um crowd of people who like grew up and loved that but like yeah all as far as reaching of them right but reese as far as reaching mass audience no like you're you're just not gonna it's not gonna do well. You're not gonna um, get you're not gonna get six million sales off of 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 a, of a fixed camera angle tank controlling survival horror game anymore, unless it's like really cheap or like on Game Pass or something. But like so, I expect fifty dollars. I expect most survival horror remakes are going to be yeah. more action oriented. Um, and and again, like it didn't look bad all the way up until the combat started, and then the combat started, and you're like, "Whoo, that's that's rough." The only hope you really have at this point is like because it doesn't even have a they don't even know what year it's even going to come out. You can at least look at it and go, "Okay, well, it's far out, 2025 at best." At best, yeah, at it, best. it's it's rough. It'll be a while. 
Uh, then we got Space Bioshock, which uh, Judas. You know, Judas. Yes. So, okay, here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing about Judas. It probably looks like exactly what any Bioshock fan wants to see from. Yeah. Right? Like, like I'm like, it's Bioshock in space. That's exactly what it is. I'm interested. And the thing is, I think for Bioshock fans, this is probably exactly what you wanted to see out of this game. So long as, because uh, Bioshock 1, at least, had like really good writing for the villain. Mm. It had, I mean, it was very like an Ayn Rand or whatever. Like it was yeah. very, like it had very good writing and it gets less and less so as you go on. But I, I don't remember if any of the other games are quite as memorable as one in terms of like how good the villain is written. And that's, yeah, say I feel right like, there, in, but... I feel like infinite was basically like, it was all hinged on the, the, the twist of Comstock. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say like, this is going to be exactly what you wanted. If you were looking at Bioshock uh, or looking for Bioshock, but it does seem promising if you like Bioshock. Yeah, so. here's my here's my thing that that it kind of surprises me because Bioshock Infinite was over ten years ago. We're right on its eleventh anniversary, just about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not shocked that no. Judas took this long to happen because you know uh, they shut down the studio that made Bioshock Irrational, and then you know Ken Levine went and he formed a new campground or whatever it was. So he had to go f build a new studio, get funding, hire build it up yada yada right that makes sense to me why it's taken this long to get to a new not bioshock right mm -hmm. but like a, a game that is literally the budget of a bioshock with the bioshock desk because they had to go and basically re reformulate the respawn you know not shocked what i'm really shocked by is the fact that 2k in that time who owns the ip for bioshock and did made nothing BioShock, with it. Yeah. Did nothing with it. It has Bioshock made Bioshock 2 without the Bioshock devs, you know, uh in Australia or whatever it was. It, it it's been 11 years. So there is a Bioshock game being made by 2K apparently. It is it's like it's a, it's a known sort of like uh worst kept secret thing, right? But we still have not seen and it. it's been 11 years. I'm shocked at the IP holder with all the resources and the wealth that 2K has at its disposal, which remember they own Rockstar. Somehow in 11 years, never put out a Bioshock game. Uh, it it <clears throat> it doesn't shock me that much because so much of the industry, how many titans haven't touched, you know, several IP that should have been used over and over again? And you look at all the IP that Microsoft sits on yeah. that they haven't done anything with uh, in how long? Like, but I, Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> you, you're really... Because, like, I, I've been thinking about this, too, because there's a couple games that come up that are... Not, that are Bioshock is one. We know there is a there is a Bioshock being made of some sort, I guess. But like that game did not sell bad. That game sold at least yeah. like six, seven million copies, <clears throat> and they didn't follow up on it. Near Automata has sold like seven and a half million copies, and somehow there is still no new Near game. Bloodborne has, you know, we we now know has sold like seven <laughs> yeah. million copies, and somehow there has never been anything followed up with Bloodborne. Like there's like these weird games that this game sold really well. Are we gonna make another one? Nah, never. I I I wonder I saw a tweet randomly uh that I never thought of this and apparently there might be some sort of conflict about Bloodborne getting made like maybe Sony doesn't actually own the right to make another one They or... own the IP However they don't own FromSoft Right so they basically would have to do one of two things. Someone else has to do a sequel or a remaster. Which we know they're not afraid of doing. They're not afraid of doing it, but for some reason they, they also kind of felt, it also feels weirdly like they want FromSoft involved or, or something. Or, or rather, I think, they, I think for Sony's end, this is my guess. This is my totally my guess. I think Sony really only wants to nurture IPs they fully control. Studio and IP ownership. I could see that. Part of me thinks that it's they don't think that a, a Bloodborne that doesn't have FromSoft, FromSoft involved will sell. Yeah. Because I think the FromSoft Miyazaki, I think that like mm -hmm. that and, and the thing is, games. is FromSoft <clears throat> is owned by a massive corporation in Japan. Right. Whereas, say, Kojima Productions, they're not owned by some massive corporation that they have to go through. There, There's no one blocking or or extra approval they have to go through to to sign kojima on to anything they have all the power in negotiations like right they have yeah 
Uh, Sony doesn't have sense. complete power in the, in a negotiation with anything from FromSoft. So I think for me, I think the reason why we really haven't, you know, as of yet seen anything with Bloodborne despite its sales probably just has to do with the fact that, yeah, like the name FromSoft kind of really sells, kind of goes hand in hand with it. And dealing with FromSoft means you have to deal with Kodansha. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I said that's so American, um, but yeah, they had to go through a parent company. So for them, well, it's just like make another God of War. <laughs> it'll make make another Spider Man. It'll it'll oop, there's my arm. Um, it'll uh it'll, it'll it'll serve us better. Yeah, we know it's coming. Is we'll get a Bloodborne finally. It'll be the PSVR too. Uh, speaking of which, there's a Metro Awakening on that. I'm never gonna play it, so I'm I don't know. Uh, and then Legendary Tales, which looks like a a wii u game um i am shocked that i mean that was put in this direct because okay i i kind of had a good chuckle when the guy just grabbed the skeleton and was just punching the skull like straight up i'm like okay this looks dumb but fun um but it also i i also made the joke watching i'm like yeah this is what you dropped 1100 dollars to play on your psvr2 because remember right ps5 and psvr2 specifically both required to play i don't know maybe that's going to be on others pro- it, it's probably going to be on other vr devices right because it's not an exclusive i don't think i don't think it's a vr2 exclusive i don't think but the stupid thing is like you you have uh what is it uh you have until dawn coming and it's the perfect vr like that's perfect for VR, but like you said, is like they they know no one will buy it if it's a VR game, and they want to make money. And Until Dawn will make money everywhere but VR. Yeah, even though it is like that type of experience is perfect for VR. The weird action game thing that Legendary Tales has, it's it's interesting because you are actually reading movements to block and parry and do yeah. all that stuff. And you can like grab the weapon in their hand to struggle with them. And that is a cool idea. And I don't want to take away from that. It's just like the presentation of it is pretty, pretty rough. And also by its nature, that means the combat has to be pretty slow. Probably the, like it, it's not going to be easy to react to that. You know, you're sitting on your couch, I guess if you're standing, yeah. you can play standing, they're making that like weird platform thing, right? Isn't that a, a VR thing coming out? I don't think that's Sony specific, but they are making like a weird yeah, I, platform to stand. This is at CES or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, think I, know I think I kinda know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was at CES. So maybe there's uh that type of stuff is coming along. But it is like a weird platform that you can like walk on and it like move the ground. Yeah, because everyone was like, you know, pulling the ready player one comparisons out and right. stuff. Yeah, uh, means it'll never see the light of day. Yeah. Uh, but it was a cool thing at CES. Um, but yeah, then you got Dragon's Dogma 2, which looks legit. Looks great. Looks nice. You it's expect just, that it, from Capcom? It's the reason you're not getting another Devil May Cry anytime soon, because these are the Devil May Cry people. Yep. Um, although, <sighs> I will say that you can definitely... like. You can see that if you're a dragon, dragon dogs, a dragon's dogma fan, Jesus, uh, you're probably pretty happy with the effort they put in here. So maybe another Devil May Cry is worth the wait. Uh, this team seems like they're living up to it. It looks good. I thought the combat looked pretty cool in, in it. it. Does, it looked, yeah. and I like the fact that it was basically just people playing the game. Uh, I, I enjoyed that aspect of the trailer. However, it was funny how they were sprinkling like flavor dialogue into the little gameplay and it, and it, it was just like the most nerdiest shit ever you yeah. know where it's just like you know the just like it, straight up dungeons and dungeons and dungeons like you know uh, like you know thou hast you know will, will thine you know d- defeat thine dragon upon which thy breast is blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> this is kind of like whatever dude this is <laughs> The guy was like listening to Shakespearean soliloquies while he yeah, dude. It was like the... it was walking around a Ren fair, like yeah. <laughs> listening. Which hey, it's the setting of the game. I just thought it was kind of funny how like hard, the, you know, the the voice clips were going in for like you know, thou dragon, thou strikest at the earth with the fire of the. <laughs> it's like okay, whatever, dude. I'm 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 here to parry some shit. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things about like. Uh, I guess the global culture mixing the way it is, is like for all the weebs that are really into samurai stuff, uh, especially like the samurai culture that never really existed, but 
uh, the romanticized and, yeah you know fantasy like, samurai culture there's that friggin nerd but for like medieval europe or like cowboy culture in japan mm -hmm. and i think that's fascinating that's cool as hell uh genuinely love that i I mean, I'm tired of weebs, but I think we deal with them more than we deal with like, like if we had kids that were super into cowboys here, it'd be sort of annoying. So I guess, <laughs> I, guess I guess probably there's a lot of people really uh, annoyed by that in Japan, too. Um, <clears throat> and then the game that I was expecting to love the most to be real excited. I still for. do think it was probably the most, it's, I don't know, the, the best looking thing or the thing I want to play thing. Thing I want to try the most. I wish it didn't look like a early PS3 game or a late stage PS2 game. Okay, Rise of the Rock. Can, can we talk about the fact that both Dragon's Dogma? The, here's Dragon's Dogma Two. It's coming out March 22nd. The next game was Rise of the Ronin. It's coming out March 22nd. March 22nd. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I I, I don't nice. know. Maybe the person making the schedule is all like, "This is brilliant. This is how I'll do it." Um. But I will say that, like, I was very excited for this. I'm not like, hey, I, I, I'm still excited for it. But it looks rough. It looks yeah. sort of rough to know that it's coming in only a couple of months. Like, if, oh, it done. That's the game. Yeah, it's Team Ninja, and the combat looks like a weird. Like you were saying, it looks like near a Neo. You can see the bones of their Neo game in there, and you really can. Yeah, it just it looks like a janky tank a take on ghost of tsushima the graphics and some of the textures looks like i couldn't help but I, I couldn't help but notice how muted the color scheme was because there's was driving yeah. me nuts where i'm like i'm looking at this ps5 exclusive and i'm like why does this look worse than ghost of tsushima and i'm like i'm like because the colors are super muted in this game it may also be the first time that i've ever been able to look at something and be like the frame rate is definitely not going to be good <laughs> like the frame rate does not look good on that game. Here, you know, he, and normally it doesn't mean I'll, anything to me. Here's where I think maybe there's the concern, like what you're noticing here. I don't believe Team Ninja's done an open world game before. None of the Neos or or, or Wulong or 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 anything oh. they've done. I don't think they've ever done a straight open world game. There was an open world Dynasty Warriors game that was hated and terrible, apparently. Um, part nine. But like, yeah, for this game in particular, I, from what I understand, this is pr I think this is Team Ninja's first real go at trying to do an open world style game. And it kind of, to me, looks like it has that sort of growing pains of someone jumping into open world for the first time. Because you, you expect something from Team Ninja to be very polished. Yeah, because they're usually Especially very, combat wise. Yeah, and they're usually known for their, their graphics and, and crap. So... Um, I, I think the combat looked 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 all right actually to me because it looked like it looked very neo heavy where there's a lot of emphasis on like perfect stance blocks and yeah yeah stance and perfect blocking. Um, we'll we'll see. Uh, uh, it definitely looked like they're trying to do way more with their combat than Ghost mm -hmm. of Tsushima because Ghost of Tsushima was like Pretty you simple. have a you have a samurai sword you have three stances this in like you basically play this sort of game of of, of rock paper scissors. Um, you know, or or like hard counter counter this thing, counter spears with this stance, counter swords with this stance, yeah, whatever. Um, this enemy used this stance. That kind the of only thing. real like problem four. I yeah, the only real problem I had with Ghost of Tsushima was that the pairing system was based on prediction, not on not on on the hit. So in a lot of Japanese character action games, when you parry, they want the parry to be on the hit, on the connection of of two two characters hitting each other. And a lot of Western games, for some reason, they like to have parry. The t the parry window is before the hit. And Ghost went that mm -hmm. way as well, where I had to constantly remind myself, parrying is not on the hit of the enemy, you know, on, on, on the enemy swinging at you. It's They want you to be a little predictive. Do it a little bit, just a little bit before the hit connects. And that's how parrying works in Ghost of Shima. So this one looked more Team Ninja, where it's like it's very much on the hit. And it's probably going to be even a smaller window yeah. than most games because it's Team Ninja and that's kind of like how their Neo stuff works. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. I'm 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 still down to try this game out. I, uh, yeah, I'm not discouraged in terms of like I'm not gonna get. I I am down. But I do um, think you're right though. There there was something off about the 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 sort of overall presentation graphics of the game. I guess I just hope that they didn't rush this out. 
mm. because it looks like Sony doesn't have much on, you know, on dock or whatever. Or... Yeah, and I think, and, and really, that's kind of like on the real takeaway I hear. Well, <laughs> this was announced a, a hot minute ago, uh, so I hope it's had enough time to bake, but... That like kind of leads because so I, I don't know. Do you, would you say for you this was probably the game you were most yeah, interested oh, in playing? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, same for me. I was most interested in playing this, and 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 Booty Blades probably a second, probably just because. Oh, Paris, for me, I, Judas is the second that uh, hmm. like where I was like, oh, uh, maybe Silent Hill two. I was sort of interested in because I like the genre a lot, but those are so the far three. away. Yeah, those are the three games, though, in the entire presentation mm -hmm. that I was like that piqued my interest. So, so yeah, like this this goes well with what I what I wanted to see next. Kind of goes well with the next thing, which was Death Stranding two, which we got this mm -hmm. long, long drawn out Kojima ass edited take on on Death Stranding <laughs> yeah. two on the beach. Uh, you know, there's. It, when they showed gameplay, which wasn't a lot, but they did show some, it looked pretty much like the last game, which I was a little surprised by. I kind of thought Kojima was going to throw a curveball with the gameplay. And maybe he is, because the dialogue seemed to indicate that, like, seemed to indicate the gameplay would be different. Like, you'd be doing mm -hmm. different things. Like, the dialogue and the storytelling seemed like a lot of a lot has changed. Things have, have definitely, you know, gone different with Death Stranding 2, but the gameplay, the actual raw gameplay, looked more or less the same. Yeah, right. Uh, I was expecting was more action. You know, yeah, because like, there was uh, that thing at the, where she shows him, like, here's right. our armory, and I was like, oh, are we going, like, way, are we kind of, like, leaning into the gunplay? And the most action was was from that guy who looked like a, like a fucking anime gack, you know, rock band dude. Going, we, 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 Troy Baker's Joker? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yes, yes. He he lo he looked like some he looked like some anime like rock star thing. Um, I, I don't know. He, he looked like he came out of Death Note or something. I don't know. Joker, <laughs> Joker, <laughs> Joel, Joker. Uh, yeah. No, that was uh, that was just a cutscene. It wasn't like I would have actually been impressed if they, if you know, when that big samurai dude shows up and kills all his dudes, and he like whips out his guitar sword, and I'm like, and then it switched to gameplay. And it showed him like doing like character action things. I've been like, okay, I, w I was actually kind of expecting that gameplay. Oh, sh you know, oh snap, drop moment, but it didn't happen. It was just a cutscene. I'm I'm sort of interested. If, so he says in the presentation that like next year will be his 40th year. Um, yeah, or or, or 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 that next year or two years. I think he said 2026, maybe. Which he said oh, right after cool. announcing the new game, which I was kind of like taking as indicative of like that's when he's going to show his his big character New action espionage. yeah okay yeah action yeah maybe i misunderstood uh just sort of blows me away the idea like he must have started when he was like 20 yeah yeah so he he's 60 now and he's talking about making like his magnum opus but if he's saying that his next game not death stranding 2 is going to be the game that like and this is why it was so weird to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why I was so weirded out about this whole thing. Because here's the thing. Metal Gear Solid 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, they radically changed the gameplay. And I will always, mm -hmm. you know, I, I will give kudos to Kojima for that. He didn't stay in one place with his games. He always was mixing things up with the gameplay. We, we, we have to at least acknowledge that. That didn't look the case for Death Stranding 2. And part of me just sat there through that whole massive long trailer, and I was like, "Just make a fucking movie, dude." Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a trailer. That was a short film. The short film, like, just make a movie. <clears throat> like, cut the cord to the game industry, dude. You clearly are like, you clearly are bored with game development now. Make a movie. Uh, uh, side and, note: and, if you if you follow him on uh, Twitter, he gives great movie reviews. Yeah, like when he, he doesn't, doesn't like something, he just says he saw it. Yeah. He's, I, he's I went to go great. see this movie. That's, that's it. Um, <laughs> says he's like, don't have nothing nice to say. Don't say nothing at all. The thing <laughs> is, I would go see a Kojima film. Right. I think anyone. I think anyone right. who knows him would probably go see it. But part of me is just kind of like uh, the 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 doubling of when we saw gameplay for Death Stranding. And maybe they're and again, this game's not coming out this year, so maybe they're just hiding a lot of the new stuff. Which fair enough. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's the reason. What little snippet we did see of new gameplay looked exactly the same, 
and all the new stuff was just new characters, new cutscenes, new dog. And part of me was just like, well, then just make your movie. And then he comes out and says, I'm making another game after this. That's not this game, not OD, but as another character aspect that's gonna that's gonna blend the the world of movies and games together. I'm like, oh, I've heard this before. You know, he's been saying this for 30 years. Yeah. Uh, so then, like, the, the weird pan out to Sony Studios, and part of me was just kind of like, am I the only one who's kind of just sort of like, myth, not myth, but just sort of like, ugh, you're losing, you I'm losing interest. I'm not impressed when someone says, I want to, I want to merge movies and games together. To me, that just sounds like like corporate speak for like, you know, we, we need to have great corporate IP synergy. It just sounds like fucking David Zaslav at Warner Brothers talking about how he's going to leverage his IP, you know, with yeah. a combination of movies and music so I can make a bunch of money and fire a bunch of people. So what I think this means, and this is a weird prediction, um, but I, I have a feeling that the two things that this means is either A, there will be like a live action movie or series that leads into the game or the game leads into that yeah. and they'll release around the same time that seems like something sony would try to do um but the the whole like fusing uh film and and games that's already happened like Is every, every triple a game trying to do this they had that quantum break game oh yeah and 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 like sort of the halo series and then like they immediately shut down microsoft's film studio well, because the Halo series was written by people that uh, clearly don't like Halo. <laughs> um, like they they got a great actor to play Master Chief. They got Pablo Shriver. Uh, he is a great actor. He plays soldiers particularly well. Uh, but his first comment on Master Chief as a character is that like, oh, you can't act with a helmet. Oh, man. Oh, man. It, uh... Bro, <laughs> you got dunked on pretty hard because there were a lot of good examples. Of, yeah, of... well, uh, Carl Urban did great. Yeah, and I'm like, see, this, I'm like, way to throw your cinematographer under the bus. <laughs> well, the the thing is, is like, I understand why he's saying is because he earns his money based on his face. Uh, he there's very little uh, security for an actor that doesn't have their face on screen. Yeah, um, it's why people were surprised that Pedro Pascal. Uh, said yes to doing the Mandalorian the way he did it. But even then, he eventually showed his face. Yeah. Right? Um, th that is a, a thing, and he's probably trying to politically thread that needle. Um, but at the same time, it's like, it's so clear everybody involved in the Halo show just, like, doesn't, either doesn't respect Halo as a property, or doesn't like it. This <laughs> is getting Witcher real hard. Real hard, and at least the first season of Witcher tried sort of, you know, tried to sort of you know, navigate uh, actual like fandom of the show. The second season, they really just like ripped all the band aids off, and we we're like, this is going to be nothing like it. Um, but the first season, Henry Cavill, I guess, I, I think, really fought tooth and nail over it. Yeah. Um, then he got tired of that fight. <laughs> why? Why have that fight? Um, I think the biggest thing for us, by the way, was announced that there's going to be an entire other state of play. What next week? Yeah. And then they um, end, they end the whole thing by saying, we'll do a state of play or like a deep dive next week on final fantasy seven rebirth, which is like, why did you just show that now? What? Right. That's uh, so they weird wanted to me. make sure you watch to the end of all these games that uh, maybe you won't yeah, care about. Today is the anniversary of final fantasy sevens release in Japan. Mm -hmm. Uh so I don't know the the your your one last thing is an announcement of an announcement. Well, the weird thing is also that like it, it's coming out February what twenty ninth twenty ninth yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, is does the hype train need to get hyper? No, well, I, I, I think the wood kind of doesn't, but it's just sort of like why you why even bother holding back at this point? Yeah, I'm I'm not sure they could have gone for a full hour. What what is the, what is what is a week gonna do? You know, I think like, I, actually, I just think it means that it wasn't finished. The, oh, the state of play. Yeah, I think the presentation for Final Fantasy wasn't finished. Yeah, you might be right because like, the whole thing has this sort of jumbled together feel. Because going back to it and kind of like the the overall broad scope thing, Sony did not put all their cards on the table. 
No. They here's they had here's a bunch of games coming out up to April. You know, you Rise of the Ronin, Dragon's Dogma, Stellar Blade, you know, Foam Stars, Hell Divers 2, right? And then here's games we have no idea when they're coming out. We're gonna tell you straight up Death Stranding 2 is not coming out this year. We don't have a first party game this year. When I say first party game, I mean a game that Sony owns the studio. They own the studio. It's not a money hat. Like Rise of the Ronin is a money hat. Final Fantasy VII Reaper is a money hat. Death Stranding right. 2 is technically a money hat, even when it does come out. Um, these are money hatted games from from companies they don't outright own. Uh, so it, to me, it's 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 Stellar Blades the same way. The money hat for a company they don't own. Where is their first party content? Like they're basically just paying third party people to make games for them at this point. Has Sony announced layoffs yet? Uh, you know, it, I don't I, know. Off the top of my head, maybe, I can't remember. maybe they have. If not, it'll be tomorrow because that's how things right. seem to go with us. Uh, Jim Ryan fights tooth and nail to keep uh, Microsoft from buying Blizzard, then leaves. Then it starts coming out that they have nothing really on deck for uh, 2024. Then Sony's stock takes maybe a little bit of a hit, probably not a huge hit, but maybe a little bit of a hit. And then Sony announces layoffs. Is that what we're looking at? Is that what we're looking at in the very? I mean, this really does. It does feel like a. I mean, if it hasn't happened already, but yeah, that feels like the snowball, right? Like, right. Like Jim Ryan leaving right after the deal closed for Activision Blizzard to me did definitely seem not a coincidence. Uh, it felt um, well, you know, I, I think him planning to leave was there for a while. But I think it felt like he was getting out before the drop came. No, oh, like, yeah, before the axe fell on him. Yeah, like maximum maximum compensation. He's leaving at a high point. Sony's never been doing better. And he leaves right before Sony's, you know, not doing so well anymore. And again, Microsoft has had a decade of just a shit show. You know, they yeah. really haven't, haven't been doing well. And as much as I think we both like Phil he hasn't been hey they 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 actually they were actually they had an up year that came out like last night where it's like they were they had an up year a bunch of stuff was up Mm -hmm. you know subscriptions were up and revenue was up and like hardware sales were even tiny littlest bump were up so of course they needed to of course they needed to fire those 1900 people they're making money uh microsoft is uh, i think that this is going to be i i don't know but i think it's going to be the year that they start to have a little bit of a upswell like they have a comeback it almost feels like again like the way tides kind of work where it's kind of like sony's kind of like we don't know what's going on with their projects but microsoft's projects are finally coming to fruition right uh i think that's where it's gonna you know watch the next because ps5 is not it's not living up to it like it's it's really it's doing fine sales wise which is the weirdest thing like the the amount of right. like raw systems being sold they're selling the systems Right. I, I, I'm not talking from like a sales. I'm talking like this is going to be a forgotten generation, console generation. Mm. Like there's nothing that yeah, needed right. to be on PS5. You're not going to go like, oh, that was a generation defining game. We're three years in and we don't have any standard. Mm-hmm. I mean, like PS4, three years in, how many like defining games had come right. out? Right. Yeah. So it, just like, the fact that three years has gone by from PS5 and I can't think of a single game other than Spider-Man 2 that required being on PS5. And did it, though, require being on PS5? Demon's Soul as a launch game still is a PS5 only game and it looks really good and it's only on PS5 still. Right. I'm sure did it could have come out on PS5. Yeah, did PC. it have to be out on at PS5? least it, At least I can say this. It looks like a game that looked like it was beyond PS4 games. Okay. For the Demon Souls remake. So one in three years. Yeah. So it's like, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure like a a PC version of that game could have existed. My brother was like talking about like, oh, I'm going to buy a PS5. And I was immediately like, eh, (laughs) I would would hold off. I would hold off. Like if you're really like aching to get into a console gaming, you know, uh, wait another year. Yeah. Because like, uh, to be honest, Pro's probably coming. Does he have a decent PC? Because it's like, look, Horizon yeah. 2 just got announced for, for PC coming out in March. Yeah, it, so, uh, he he has a great PC, I think. Yeah, so right, so I, he's fine. 
as far like and the thing is like well, what does xbox have I'm like you know the thing about xbox is like it's cheap and it has game pass and i don't need to really think about it yeah game pass like, sells itself like, i'm not even thinking about xbox when, when we talk about this console because we don't really get into console warring we're talking we're, we're, we're not in the console war fan like space because the thing is i have all of them you know i have all of yeah. them. I, have an X, I have an xbox a ps5 you have a ps5 you have a switch you have a decent pc i don't even know if you have an xbox right now i don't have an xbox i play it on pc Oh, well, there you go. But either way, like, but Microsoft's cool with that. Um, so for us, it's like we really don't even get get into the consoling. It's just like for us, like as people who own PS fives, we have, we have them, we bought them. I'm kind of like I spent I spent half a grand on this thing three years ago, and it feels like I bought a PS four Pro Plus. Right. Yeah. God. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, I'm I. The other day when we were talking about a, a PS five Pro coming out. My first response was like, already? It's only been a year. And then I realized, oh, it had been three years. It'll be four by the time it comes out. <clears throat> like, that's wild to me. It is um, wild. And it's also kind of like, it again, falls into that sort of, uh, what did the, what, what does a PS5, what did we need on PS5 Pro that the PS5 itself couldn't have done? Right. Uh, well, I can tell you what Sony needed, more money. That's <laughs> what they needed. No they need more money and they needed more layoffs. I, okay. <laughs> Uh, any any final thought on any particular game from the presentation? Or? You know, I don't I don't think the I don't think the presentation was necessarily. Like, some people were like it was mid, it was bad, it was terrible. I was like, it was all right. It was. It, this did get leaked. The, the yeah, vast, a lot of it got ma leaked, the vast too. majority of this data play was leaked, so we kind of knew what to expect going in. Um, and and if anything, it was just sort of like. I don't know why Stellar Blade focused so much on on NPC side questing and shit. Like, who cares about that? Nobody wants to see that. Um, Rise of the Ronin looked pretty muted graphically, but I'm still interested in playing it. Dragon's Dogma 2 looked nice, but like coming out the same day as Rise of the Ronin, if I have to pick one, I'm probably going Rise of the Ronin just to see how how badly Japan shits on on, on Matthew Perry <laughs> and, and other and, uh, probably pretty that. bad. Not that one, not the one you're thinking of, not the actor, the historical figure. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just curious to see how that goes because historical drama, and I'm not getting Ghost of Tsushima anytime soon, apparently. Uh, I thought there was going to be like one, like at least one sort of shock and awe, like that they played. I thought maybe a Ghost of Tsushima 2 or yeah there was there was no like mic drop moment for them and then and then yeah. when they do the one last thing it's like we're gonna be back next week with more on final fantasy 7 like what well what why did you just show that now the game's about to come out yeah i, re I really thought there was gonna be something yeah i think we were kind of missing the big boom moment because even if this wasn't leaked even if there was no leak at all for the state of play right we've seen stellar blade we've seen rise of run we've seen dragon's dogma 2 you know, we've seen Silent Hill 2. We've we had we have had at least one trailer for Death Stranding, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a shorter one, but I'm like we knew it was coming. We knew it existed. Um it's nice to get updates on this. Judas was at least we knew it existed, but we hadn't seen it yet. So that was actually kind of new, like new footage or whatever. Yeah, it was kind of nice. I like uh, that. So it was kind of nice. It was kind of nice, I guess is the way I would I would describe it. It was kind of nice. Anyone but who it, gave this was... presentation an A shocks me, but I wouldn't give it an F either. I would C B. I was like B minus. Yeah. My my feeling on it is, is B minus because like again, even with even if you didn't know anything from the leaks, if you knew nothing from the leaks, it would still be games you'd already heard of, games you'd already seen, games that some of them we already knew the release date already. So maybe it, it's it, VR users that were given it an A. Metro, the, those Metro people are really like, yeah. Well, because it's finally there's two games coming to PSVR two. Bro, bro, those might be the last two PSVR two Ooh. games. Ooh. <laughs> I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer here, but uh, I don't know if anyone's gonna buy it. Again. <laughs> I, don't I don't see PSVR two sales like blowing up anytime soon. God, <laughs> God, I hope. Uh, just I want VR to sort of die and stop taking resources from things that i actually because there are vr games that like i would be like oh that'd be great if it wasn't vr vr um, games are cool but i mean in, in in this sort of like you know closure happy layoff happy industry right now it, it kind of like i'm like vr is something that just kind of needs to go away for a little while until this industry can sort itself out it's gonna limp on like 3d movies <laughs> <laughs> on yeah <that> <laughs> i am i guess <laughs> on that note we've got 
producers to thank. If you're interested in becoming a patron at any level, please check out patreon.com slash games podcast. Our dude of the week was Matthew K. Thank you, Matthew K. And our producers for this episode are Zyber Knight, Mutton Chops Johnson, Scrunami, Kuroi35, Hyperviper89, HockeyCon64, LCL Mayhem, Ziggy Z, and Online Persona. Thank you, dudes. We'll catch you next time. Later, dudes.